This is the Vina McCall. <laughs> is it? They're looking rough these days. <laughs> 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 what have you been up to? Fall from right. Are we, are we on? Yeah. Are we on? <laughs> well, hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just still Start giving it. we're giving our our lovely audience a chance to join us. This is of course Love Rugby League Weekly. I'm happy to be back in the ball steep chair. <laughs> Drew handled it superbly last week. Oh, thank you very much. I didn't give him that much stick, considering that it had been uh, you know the week from hell for Wigan. All of them have just announced Danny Langtree. All of them have signed Danny Langtree. So we'll On be talking about that. Well. On a contract until the end of the 2020 season. Are you getting that message from up on high? Will the big top of crisp things floating now? From the ceiling in a minute. Oh, we're on. What have you done? We're on. We're on. It's breaking we're technology. We're on. I'm breaking Amazon. technology. Right, okay. Well, you've got more notifications than I have. Let's start, Dave. Come on. The <laughs> listeners are getting impatient to you, Dave. Have they? Are you sure? Has anybody joined us yet? Well, Let right. us know if you're in. Come in. Any questions you want to discuss, anything at all, uh, predictions or thoughts on such hang and on, such. Hang on, hang on. Thoughts on Daryl Pearl's 5,000 slash not 5,000 pound uh, ban. We do these predictions and we're always wrong. We What's are. the point in doing them? We are. Uh, anyway, I'm glad that we've been joined once again by James Messenger to uh, increase our um, appeal. Yeah, back by popular demand. Uh, your nan's not joined us, has she? She's not, no. She don't want to see someone as arrogant as Drew. Right. right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you are, of course, watching the Love Rugby League Weekly Show in association with our sponsors, Betfred. My name's Dave Parkinson, Drew Derbyshire and James Messenger, all to chat about everything rugby league related. Now, it's been an interesting old week, not least because I was left on my own in the studio again, pushing the buttons for the latest Final Hooter podcast that you can find on site. Um, that features Justin Holbrook, Steve Price, Joe Philbin, Matt Diskin and John Duffy, all within about 45 minutes worth of chat. A nice, nice packed show. It was a very good listen. We were listening this morning, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Very good listen, Dave. You always produce a very good show. You are. Oh, well, thank you. I do. All right. Has Adrian been skipping a few shows, Dave? What's, what's oh, no. He's, 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 he's just holiday time. You know where it is. It's getting before Easter and yeah. he's off, you know, so. Uh, yeah, we can't. We can't really <laughs> take too much off him, you know, that respect. Um, I was up early this morning, by the way, fellas. What very thing? early, wasn't it? Very early, yeah. Recorded the latest Barlow podcast with Steve Manning. That's live on a link on my uh, Twitter account. So at D Parky Rugby and also on at Barlow Cups as well and the Barlow website. Formerly D Parky RL. Drew, what's been going on on site? Oh, in fact, you can both take this on. You, know, yeah, you, you both know far more than me. Yeah. What's been going on on site? Uh, we, well, we, right at the start of the week, we had the, the normal paper talk feature on site. Uh, it was reported in uh, League Weekly this week that Trent Barrett could be on his way to becoming uh, Wigan's new head coach. Are they going to get him on a contract? Made very interesting reading. Uh, it might be a gentleman's handshake. All right. Um, <laughs> we've had enough of that, really, haven't we? We've had the, the, the usual off the record um, column, gossip column going on site on So, what's, on the, big, what's the other big gossip then? What, the big, what's the the big, big gossip is uh, Wigan apparently taking a look at Chris Atkin. Of a whole car. The, 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 it's fallen a long way from the tree, hasn't it? Mm. This half back tree that Wigan used to dominate. Mm. You know, when you consider what, 25, 30 years ago, it was Andy Gregory, and now it's Chris Atkin that they're looking at. Mm. And apparently, uh, the NRL uh, clubs are circling Jack Walker as well from Leeds. I think he's too small. I think he gets I think, a lot I, of bangs, yeah, I think he's a bit he's a bit too small, especially for the NRL. Mm. Well, the you've NRL got, is a massive comp, isn't it? You've had Sam Tonkins though as well going to the NRL. He's not the he's not the biggest by any means and he's he's done relatively well over there. Well he but, didn't really, did he? He ended up coming back ahead of Yeah, well he came, he came back early, but he still he still produced some very good performances mm. in a very tough and, NRL competition. And to be fair, I'd, I'd still say he was about ten or fifteen kilos heavier than what uh, Jack Walker is yeah. now. Jack, Jack Walker's a very very small player. Don't get me wrong, he's a fantastic player, isn't he? And he's a delight to watch at times. But uh yeah, I think it, I think if he does go to the NRL, I think it, it should be a few years yet. But who am I to, to tell a world class player what 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 he can and can't do? Uh, we want your thoughts as well. So if there's anything that we don't mention in the show, you feel we should be talking about it, then do let us know. We're, we're, we're both looking out on site for any um, any messages that you've got for us. 
Um, I wanted to start, I wanted to turn the game up on its head. All right. Because I wanted to start, you guessed it, amateur boys. Uh -huh. Amateur boys. Right, okay. Let's get it down. It's favourite. <laughs> so, the National Conference League is a little bit older, as we know. Egremont Rangers are top of the Premier Division. Now, they've had a, a, a brilliant result. They beat the bottom place team 52-10, Thornhill Trojans, to go top. Uh, Matty Henson, Barla Tourist last year up in Fiji. Hope you're doing well, Matty. Scored a hat-trick. So he's uh, bounced right back into form. I'll just run through these there quickly. Siddle won a bruising game with Kells, 23-20 away. Wathbrow Hornets enjoyed a road trip and a win at Lot Lane, which is, is a fantastic result there. Mm -hmm. Lee Miners Rangers, though, Drew, right? They were losing 20 points to six at half time against Rochdale Mayfield. Ended up 26 all. Oh. Talk about that for an exciting yeah. game. Uh, Westall also warmed up for their Barla National Cup final, which takes place on Sunday. Um, with a, a dress rehearsal win, 29-16, against Dato Heath Crusaders, who they'll also face in the final. However, on that same day, Dato Heath, the first team, mm -hmm. are also in action in the Challenge Cup. So I'd say Dato Heath have got bigger fish to fry this year, haven't they? Oh no, it's a massive, it's a massive trophy though. I mean, the chance, just a chance to do it. I mean, yeah. What what that does show is that they've got so much strength in depth. I mean, they field three open age sides. Mm. Yeah. When when you look at some championship clubs, they can't even name twenty of their own players. So well, and some super league clubs are only naming uh, twenty or twenty five players, aren't they? Exactly. Mm. You know, so fantastic there. Division one, Dewsbury Moor Maroons are still winless after Wigan sent packs one through in that one twenty seven eighteen. Callum Worthington scored a hat trick, uh, which was the highlight as York Acorn won 44 18 at Featherstone Lions. Milford Marlins held off a spirited Normanton Knights by 23 20. Might and Warriors claimed their first win of the season with success at Ulton Raiders. Uh, Wing Lee James scoring a hat trick in that game. Um, Saddleworth Rangers continue to find the going tough in Division 1, succumbing to leaders Pilks Rex by 16 points to 28. Skirler, meanwhile, as the seesaw tussle with Ta Stanningley, 25-18. Division 2, clock face miners, they had a massive home success against Ascombe, 40 points to 8 in that one. Uh, that result leaves the Cumbrian team bottom of the table after five rounds. Intros Bridge remain top after a hard-fought success over Crossfields, 33-24 in that one. And another team to win big on the travels were Hull Dockers, they accounted for East Leeds, 34-16. And... There was a high scoring clash between West Bowling and Barrow Island, 36 18 to West Bowling. But even that falls into insignificance. We get this for a result 40 all between Wigan St. Jude's and Beverly. Real no. interesting game, that one, for another reason. Some great attacking play there, but I assume not some great defence. Yeah, well, uh, another one of my mates from tour, uh, Jack Howdell, he had a right mixed bag of a game. He scored a hat trick for Beverly. And went off with a broken leg, so he's been missing for like weeks. He, he tweeted a picture from his like bedside. Obviously, they, they give him like gas and air or something because he's like that. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. uh, but get well soon, team. Jack. Uh, and then just to, to round us off on that score, Division Three, Dewsbury Celtic have continued their tremendous start to the season. Hard fought 22 12 win against Ewer. Uh, Oldham St. Anne's picked up a good win on the road at Driglington 25 16. Dom Bryan scored four tries for Oldham St. Anne. So that's like the performance of the week, if you like, from an amateur point of view. <coughs> Milan continue their recent revival, 44-18 at Gateshead Storm. Zach Clark scored a hat-trick for Gateshead, but still finished on a losing side. So he's done a, he's done a Conrad Hurl, hasn't he? <laughs> scored all, a load of points and still ended up losing out. Hunslet Warriors now look to be finding their feet in that division. They ran 10 tries past Ensingham, winning 56-12. And Division 3 is new league leaders. You've guessed it, Lee East. They enjoyed a 56-16 home romp over Eastmoor Dragons. Hooker Andrew Ball is literally having a ball in Division 3 at the moment. Hat-trick he scored. It was sparkling. He was quick. He's looking really on form. Wollstone Rovers also celebrating success as well. They won 38 points to 10 at Waterhead. If you remember when we've spoken about Waterhead before, they've topped the table in the first three weeks of the season. So that's a massive result as well. Very good. I've got one or two fixture highlights. I know you've got other things that we're going to discuss, so I just want to get through these. Premier Division, just two fixtures I'm highlighting. Egremont Rangers against Underbank this week. West Hull against Wathbrow Hornets. 
in Division 1, Northampton Knights and Pilkington Rex is going to be an absolute stormer. Might and Warriors and Skirlaw clashing a whole derby. Division 2 sees Beverly against Crossfields. Interrose Bridge, the league leaders at home to West Bowling. I think that's going to be a tremendous game as well. And Division 3 sees Gateshead Storm against Lee East. Up the East. And Dewsbury South Tip at home to Oldham St. Hans. It's also the Barla National Cup Final which takes place on Sunday. Uh, this starts at 2 o'clock over at the South Leeds Stadium where Hunslet play. It's between Thato Heath Crusaders and West Hull. Prices to get in, £5 adults, £3 concessions. If you're under 16, it's completely free. Even better. Great stuff, Dave. So, yeah, that'll be a second string for side, I assume. Yes, yeah, so yeah, second team. But, I mean, even even that's playing in, like, Division 1 of the North West Men's League. So, wow. the, 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 yeah. like, as I said, fantastic club. Uh, and West Hull just create so many young players that go on to play for, for both Hull clubs. They are to be congratulated on everything that they do as well. Uh, Dave, Dave, we've had one comment in here from uh, Max Delal who says who's the oldest. I think he's, he might be a little, being a little bit sarcastic here. <laughs> what of us? Well, he said he said he was the oldest. You're the oldest, Dave, by fifteen years. Drew's had a long paper round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've also got a, a first comment in from Daniel Murphy, Murphy saying... Um, Thanks for your comment. Over 3,000 tickets sold by Warrington for the Saints game uh, on Friday. Fantastic support. Warrington's marketing videos coming up trumps again. Fantastic. I think it's... It, uh, do you it's, think he's got anything to do with that? Cause, I mean, they go, on, they go to St. Helens and they usually sell in sort of three or 4,000 um, tickets anyway, don't they? Well, I, I'd assume with, with the position in the league table as well at the moment, with it with it being the, the, the battle of the top two, that'll be the, one of the main reasons why they're, they're selling so many tickets. But I, I think it, it, it doesn't do it any harm, does it? Yeah. Uh, with, these, with these social videos, and it, and it creates like a little bit of banter and stuff and a, a bit of friction between the fans. Not Nothing uh, too, too bad between the fans, but it, it just gives a, a little bit of banter between one another. Yeah. Uh, on social media and stuff and it's just I think it's fun more than anything and uh, and now we're even seeing other players tweet about it as well I think uh, it was Peter Matoti who tweeted um, saying it's it's great that to see that both clubs are having like a, a little jokey dig at each other uh, on Twitter you know what this means this means I'll, that I'll we like should it. do something like this on Twitter ahead of every <laughs> one of these Love Rugby League weeklies I can just see James getting involved and really sticking the boot into me and Drew yeah coming with some harsh comments the day before we're about to film <laughs> that's all we have to do <laughs> since Sarah all says looking forward to heading up to Gate said we least this Saturday helping out again for one week only oh he's making a return oh. the Reynolds returns eh? <laughs> right fair enough fair enough Let's move on to Super League. I am, I am mixing up the format yeah. completely today. Um, so what do you make of last week's results? So it's Castle for Tigers 38, Wigan Warriors 28, Catalans Dragons 18, St. Helens 10, Hull Kingston Rovers 45, Leeds Rhinos 26, Salford Red Devils 16, Hull FC 23, Wakefield Trinity 17, Huddersfield Giants 16, and Warrington Wolves 48. London Broncos 12. Where do you want to start? Uh, I think best off starting at Hull KR. Hull KR v Leeds, I think that was, for me, the result of the weekend. I think Hull KR for a few weeks have kind of been, they've been, they've been showing that they've got, they've got that, that in them to produce a good performance and Leeds come to town and they, they did, it, it wasn't just a case of Leeds being really poor, it was a case of Hull KR being very good in attack as well. Danny Maguire against his former club was, I think, outstanding. The forwards of Hull KR really laid the platform. And George Lawler, I think, got uh, picked out for special mention. He had a very good game. Craig Hall as well at fullback was absolutely sensational. He had one of his on days, didn't he, Craig Hall? He where did. everything went right. Apart from, I think, one kickoff where he tripped over his own legs. That, that, yeah. yeah, that was a highlight. <laughs> <really. laughs> Attempting to tackle Conrad a little one on one. Yeah, that, that's never uh, going to end well. Well, it's never going to end well for anybody, but, that, no, is it? But apart from that, he was a fantastic. Yeah, wasn't yeah. He? he was all over the shop. He supported play. Uh, it was great, but one highlight for me was Donny Maguire's performance. Mm. Have we it, dismissed or not spoken enough, really, about Hull Kingston Rovers so far this season? Uh, I think, I think no. I, I don't think 
it's it's a case of that then. I think the the thing with OKR so far this season is their injuries. Mm. They, they've had seven or eight injuries in near enough every single game they've had, so they've never had a full spine because obviously Adam Quinlan's not been playing yet. I know Craig Oliver did a superb job at fullback, but mm. Quinlan's one of those star men, isn't he? Uh, he's not been playing yet. Uh, they've had a lot of changes in the halves uh, because Maguire's missed a couple of games as well. Um, Lee Jewett's not been playing, so they've had a lot of injuries. And I, you know, I'm not making excuses to for To be fair to Lee Jewett, though, he only ever manages about 15 games a season, doesn't he? <laughs> he's, if you look at his injury record, I don't mean that disparagingly of yeah. the guy, because... He's, he's my sort of forward because he's tough. He, 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 he really gets stuck in where nobody else, <laughs> uh, where everybody else fears to go. Really, yeah, we, it? well, then you've got, to, you've got to add into the equation as well. This week it's Mossy Masoy. Mm. He, he's another one who's been ruled out for at least six weeks or around, around that time yeah. period with an injury. And I think they're, they're really doing it tough at the minute. I think Tim Sheen's acknowledged that himself. He said that they're down on troops a little bit, but they just need to keep going keep getting by week by week just pray for no more injuries because that, that's what they, they can't have at the minute with their four yeah, we, we, we've got a, a comment as well Ian yeah. Gallagher says is there any truth that uh, Comrade Hurrell is uh, having an operation on his back after carrying the lead so far this season <laughs> <laughs> they are a bit of a one man team aren't they yeah. uh, you know what if it, if it, if it, but, but I know Merrin's gone back to Australia on compassionate grounds uh, for the time being but there's some people I, I, making hair with that aren't they suggesting that yeah, he no. won't be coming back yeah, no, he's, he's definitely either. coming back. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's definitely coming back. I think I believe it's it's a family bereavement on his partner's side uh, of the family, so they've just gone back. But um, what I was going to say is that I think Merrin and Hurrell have been Leeds' two best players so far this season. I think Merrin's copped a lot of stick. Yeah. Uh, I think Merrin's been a, a, a standout forward in a weak pack. Um, I think if if that's fair to say. Merrin's made so many tackles this season. He's been a real workhorse for them. Somebody's uh, had to make some tackles. Well, yeah, because... it's it's the for, it's it's the forward part that's been that's been simply not good enough for Leeds. For Leeds. It's it's not a Leeds forward pack. No disrespect to Wellington Albert, but when it's a sign of the times for Leeds, in my opinion, when when they're signing Wellington Albert. Yeah, well, you you we've spoken about Horrell and Merrin, but you've got to acknowledge as well um, Ash Hanley. He's had a very good start to the season. I think he's one of the top try scorers in the league. The he's Brit- got nine tries, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, nine season. tries already. And that, that left edge seems to be getting better and better. I think, I think it's the second time in three games for Leeds where, that a player's got a hat-trick or more and they've still ended up on the losing side. So obviously has, uh, Hanley got a hat-trick in Catalan. For me, though, they are sort of particularly susceptible Leeds, aren't they, at this moment in time? They only seem to be able to play down one side. Um, uh, for me... There's nothing coming down that right hand side. But then it's 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 hard at the minute for Leeds to generate any sort of momentum going forward, regardless of whether it's left or whether it's right. The fact that the forward packs are losing every battle down the middle, and I think I think until Leeds' forward pack can get a grasp of a, a grasp of a game, yeah, I, I think they've got to be considered relegation candidates. Not I know it's early to say, but I think the way they've been playing until until their forwards step up, then. I could see them being down there for a long time. I know they, 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 yeah. brought, it, they brought in a guy... I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. I don't think it's too early to be talking about that because we're 10 games into the yeah. season. So yeah, we've only got 18 games yeah. remaining, haven't we? Or com- 19. Com- well, coming up to the Easter period as well, I think, I think mm-hmm. they've acknowledged that they needed to improve that forward part. They've signed the players from Cronulla. I can't have a see man of fan guy. Yeah, that guy. So we'll be... He'll You've be. been practising. I'm impressed. Oh, I was it as soon as it, as soon as it was announced. Um, on can a can you slow it down was... for the rest of us? I mean, you know, bear in mind, I'm from Lee, so we struggle sometimes with, with uh, English. So, so three. Come so on. How, how do you say? Come on. Four. So <laughs> Go on, uh, give us a. Ava, see you. Ava, see you. Ava, see you. Manu. Manu Fangai. Fangai. Should we just go it's, with, like, it's, go with it's, like a Wellington Albert and just call it's, him Arva? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's written with, it's written like C Manu Fagai, uh, Fagai, but instead of the G, it's an N. Ah, it's so pronounced it's, like an N. So it's a bit like a Tong guy, where you say Tong. Yeah. 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 Right, okay. Um, so, yeah. so, so that's that. that. That's, Drew, go, that's going to be difficult. Drew's our cultural expert, you yeah. <laughs> Well, when, when, when it's a tense moment in the game, it's going to be a, a bit of a curse for the commentators, I think. That, that name, <laughs> It'll it? be interesting to see him making his debut and seeing the guys on Sky Sports or whatever trying to pronounce that surname. I think they will go with the first name that's like Arva on the ball. Ah, but <laughs> the fact that they, I think they needed to bring him in, they needed a bit yeah. more grunt in the fall pack. But then you look at who they've got, they've got players like Singleton, they've got they've got Ferris, who not too long ago was a very good player. Obviously, they've, they've just not stepped up this year, and I think. 
that that's probably the worrying thing, the fact that it's not a case of them switching their entire forward pack. They've got a lot of the same players who've done well in the past. They're just, they're just not clicking this year, and I'm not too sure why. Mm. Um, James Lee says, good to see the Challenge Cup are obviously back this weekend. Lee Centurions and Hull KR all coming together, Max in the game tonight. Just spoke to the ticket office at Lee, and we've managed to sell 68 tickets so far. Cracking atmosphere in the Robins Nest. Can I, can I just say? Can I just say something about this? Because there's been a, a lot of. So that's just over a coach and a coach and a mini balls. But there's been a lot of groundswell regarding when this game has been arranged for on a Thursday night. It's a trek for, from from Leeds to Walk on a Thursday. Hours, no, but it's not. It's not just that trekker. because the club's coming for some criticism because it's been arranged and because they've asked for it and Lee have asked for it oh. to give that extra preparation because you're heading into your busiest time of yeah. the season where you've got like three games in ten days so are Lee almost forfeiting it then Dave? yeah I, think, so? I, I don't know but I wouldn't be expecting a victory at Hull Kingston Road, well, I, I, I reckon I reckon if Lee have asked for that I can see him putting a lot of young players out I don't, I don't think hang on hang on how many players do you think Lee's got? yeah I know that, I know they're thin on the ground anyway but st- I, th- I think when you, when there you is one or two of the young girls yeah, that think, are in the squad, think, by the way. I think yeah. that's what you need. They're, they're probably going to rest maybe a couple if, if they're prioritising the league. I think that's what they have to do. And I, I don't think it's I don't think it's right having the game on on a Thursday night because I think unfortunately because of the way that this round of the Challenge Cup is scheduled, it's, it's shocking, isn't it? It's running right yeah. into Easter. It's so it's, everybody else is going yeah. to be looking. For to that period of I, I, I it's just, the most important time of the season I don't understand it? why it's so close to Easter yeah. at all I've, and I think with the Challenge Cup we have this conversation every year and it, and it never they, changes they never seem to get the timing of the, it just right here, it, 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 seems, it seems like we play rounds one to six within a matter of two months mm-hmm. and then to, a month or two has gone by before we get Get to quarters, then another month until the semi final, then another month. So you lose track, really, don't you? So, yeah, you're just like, oh, oh. when it's quarter finals, you're like, oh, who did, who did we play last round? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 that way. It's like, it's just too far away. It's like six weeks apart, and uh, it just it drags out. Well, would you rather they start the competition a bit later, maybe, and have all the I'd rather, I'd rather them just spread, spread the. Um, but, I, but I think it's well, it's going to change. Isn't it, for, yeah, yeah, it's going to it's going to change. But for a start, I'd obviously move the move the final from August. I think having it in August is t- it's just too late mm. on in the season. It, it should be May Bank Holiday. Yeah, it should mm. be it should be the May Bank Holiday. Um, do, do you want to? Do you know who? Who's this? No, I don't know who Mike Hunt is. Oh, he's been done. <laughs> You've been, been done. done. I've done a Dave Woods. <laughs> You've been done. <laughs> That was a shoddy trip between that and you That was a shoddy trip. There we go. You see, I thought I saw him looking down at his phone for a few minutes thinking he's been lying, he's lining that one up, waiting for it to come in. Um, just so, uh, disgrace. Just back up, just back on, on You got him there, Aiden. You got him. <laughs> you didn't get you didn't get me. I didn't say it, but you got him. Yeah, just, what's the build on these say, Drew? <laughs> just back on Lee for a, for a second. I know that they did bring some of their older players back to give a talk to the squad. Um, and I only mention this because it's one of my favourite rugby league memories, the, the game that they came from. So, like, Lee won at Old Kingston Rovers against the Elks 24-0 back in 1996 or something. Uh, and I, I remember that game because Lee put a load of free coaches on, sent 12 coach loads of people over to Hull, um, and they cheered the team off from the hotel one of my most memorable days as a Lee fan. What happened to the days in Super League where you had Thursday night games, free away coaches? Is that does that not happen anymore? Uh, did they have a sponsor for it? I think there was some sponsorship money put forward for it, wasn't there? And uh, un- unfortunately, for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be dried up. I mean, I do think the scheduling of games full stop needs to be kind of looked at. Yeah, <laughs> it's still laughing you're still, on that joke. You're still tittering. See, you're set, still set tittering. <laughs> Right, that's true. Up for the rest of the show. You know what? I, I'm 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 going to move us on. Right, Lineham scoring a hat trick for Warrington. He's yeah. he's come right back into form, hasn't he? Considering he had that dodgy period. Yeah, I think it's since he came back in against Hull FC. He's five tries in two games. Been been very good, and he's just showcasing exactly what we know he's about. He's got that high quality finishing in the corner, which I, I think it, it's good for him to get back in the team and have those games because when he got that chance, you. 
you get the feeling he needed to perform when you've got Jake Mamo, who's also been very good. He's been out with an ankle injury. You wonder now where the likes of Mamo and the likes of Bryson Goodwin are going to get back into the team because the edges are looking so strong. Although, to be honest, I mean, they must see something in Mamo because they give him another contract, haven't they? Yeah, well, they're giving, they're giving him a few contracts to a lot of different players recently. I think, I think Mamo is good because of the versatility. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just play at full back. He doesn't just play on the wing. He plays centre all across the back line. I think that, that's what Warrington kind of needed. He, he reminds me a little bit of kind of how we how they utilised Mitch Brown last year. Mm -hmm. So obviously he, he arrived and he was he knew he was there as a backup, but he knew he'd have to fill in at centre, at wing. I think he might have had one game at fullback, if I remember correctly. So that's what I think. I think all good sides need a, a versatile player who can play all across the park, and I think it's, it's well-deserved. Uh, so how good were Warrington against London? And how good were London? Because I've heard... You know, some comments of coaching staff and of players saying that London played particularly well. Yeah, L game. London were London were very good. They weren't. I think the scoreline. I want. I want to say flattered Warrington a little bit, but Warrington were good mm -hmm. in attack. London, London got a couple of good tries. One of them, I think, Matty Gee cross. He, he he had a very good game. I think he made our uh, team of the week this week, and that's a uh, that's testament to how London played. Sometimes when you have a big scoreline like that, you don't get many players from the losing team recognised, but he. He did very well. I think a lot, a lot of Warrington's tries came on the outside, the outside fringes. In the wingers and centres, got quite a lot. I think. He's getting his lunch here. Yeah? He is, yeah. He's making making the most of it. We've got a fridge. There's a plausible fridge. Making the most of it. Yeah, I think yeah, London were Sat London were good. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, Paul, Paul, Paul Harrison also is a big fan of Warrington's outside backs. He's yeah. uh, he's saying there's more competition for places in the back line. Than I have seen for a long, long time. It's a great a comment. And I that, think it is. In, that's it's, what you were saying. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's especially with Jake Mamo, he can play anywhere across the back line. Yeah, yeah, the fact the fact that they've tied up both Mamo and Lineham is a good thing. Because I think for a lot of Warrington fans, the consensus was maybe it was going to be Lineham or yeah, it's going to be Lineham or Mamo. But the fact that they've kept them both a real statement of intent, and it it shows that they've got a, a versatile player, as we said, who can play all across. And I think the War I, I think Warrington have got one of the, the strongest backlines in the league just because of the fact that they've got that strength in depth not necessarily the, the first wingers centers full back but I think they've got players who can come in and are equally as good talking about strong performers at the moment what do you make of David Fafita he's like a beast at the minute isn't but, he for Wakefield well, well you, you, do our, you do our team of the week don't you James big uh, bopper I, 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 don't, I don't think there's been a week yet where David Fafita's not made it yeah. honestly four, he's, he's been sensational so four team of the weeks four appearances and I think I put in the in the latest one that we there's no chance we can leave him out because his yeah. stats I think got ten ten tackle busts two tries he, he just he just gets better and that that's the thing is is there's not been a performance where you look at Fafita and think yeah. right he's not had a particularly good game because every week he's just getting better and better and you you, you wonder how far he can actually go. Uh, typically, Danny Brough found himself not far away from the headlines, dropping the all important goal which separated Wakefield and Huddersfield. He looks like he's settled and enjoying your rugby at the minute, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He's playing very well. He's, uh, he's formed, formed a good partnership in the halves with say, Jacob Miller. And I think, yeah, I think, I think he's found, out, found a, real, a real position in the team where he can, he can be the leader because it was, it was the same at Huddersfield. He liked to be the general and he had a half-pass support in him. Having Danny Brough orchestrate the plays gives Jacob Miller the chance to be a bit more creative. We, I think we saw last year, I think he got... In total, combined probably about thirty-five or forty tries. And Sissy had a very good season, so I think, I think, I think they needed someone like Bruff to, to give Miller the chance to run. At risk of sounding like someone off lock, stock, and two smoking barrels, he's made himself the main geezer, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, it had to be the Danny Bruff show, didn't it? It just it, it, it sometimes scripts are written and uh, they just they just follow suit. Uh, it, That's very it, poetic from you, Drew. <laughs> Always there, where, it? where does that come from? I have always had it in my vocab, in my locker. It's like a change man this week, isn't it? It's yeah. a change man. Yeah. Um, man, you've not, we've not spoke about Wigan yet, so that, yeah. everything could change <laughs> in the next couple of but, minutes. But it just had to be him. He's, everyone knows what a good player he is on his day. Yeah. It, sometimes his discipline does let him down. Uh, he probably knows that himself. He's a firebrand, isn't he? Yeah. Right, to be honest. Yeah, Chris, Chris Chester's probably since his couple of cards earlier on, in the early rounds. Chris Chester's probably had a word and said, "But we we honestly can't afford to go down to uh, twelve men at any stages in games." And he he, he seems to have shaped up his discipline a little bit, and mm. he's a match winner, isn't he? He's a match winner. We spoke a few weeks ago regarding it's been a bit of a blip in Salford's form. I think I remember the conversation which we had through. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it seems to be a bit more than a blip now because it's four losses on the trot. Do you think that they've got a few issues now? Yeah. Is it because is it <laughs> they're running out of troops? I don't. I think running out of troops all because they seem to have a decent academy, don't they? Who they can call upon? Obviously, they just signed um, from Bradford. Who they signed? Oh, you're talking Huddersfield here, aren't right? you? Who are you talking about? I was talking about Salford. Oh, Salford. <laughs> so, uh, so, but yes, so I mean, oh, yeah, that's yeah, another yeah, bit yeah. of news, yeah, because yeah, yeah. is, is no. his name Oi Wilson? Um, Ollie Wilson. Uh, Ollie Wilson, that Ollie right. Wilson, um, Wilson, um, Wilson, yeah, he's, he's the actor. The oh, so, sorry, Dave, I thought he was, a, he was on about Huddersfield. Oh, uh, uh, Sol- <laughs> Salford, uh, who can they call upon? The, the, this is what we're saying. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who can they bring in? Well, yeah, he, because Ian Watson saying they'll make changes. Who, who can you who can you make changes for? But then it was, only, it was only a few weeks ago as well that Ian Watson was saying that he, he his his philosophy this year had kind of gone for quality over quantity, mm-hmm. and he admitted himself that the the maybe a bit thinner than he would have liked. He, I, I think he probably would have wanted two or three more players in there. And we always got the suspicion when talking off air on camera and whenever since the season started, there's always been the sense that if they pick up three, four injuries, especially to key players, you wonder whether they're going to have the players who can replace them. Obviously, they've got they've got a few a few decent players in reserve, but you think about the likes of Jackson Hastings and Robert Louis, if someone like that gets injured, then mm-hmm. they're a little bit stuffed really because they've, yeah. they've not got the players who can come in and... This, like yeah, this is what we said earlier in, in the season where if they start to get a couple of injuries or even if they just have a rough patch like they are doing now uh, where stuff isn't working for them but <laughs> there's plenty of other teams in the league that, that, that can shape around the squad and, and can bring some youngsters up from the academy like we're going to have done um, dropped a couple of first team names but Salford can't do that so, it- Salford has stuck with 20, 25 men but especially because they've got a couple of injuries as well that, that's even lower they can't change the team so does that mean I'm not saying it is but can some of the players just back off a little bit and think well we're going to be playing next week anyway does it, does it matter yeah, do I have to put 110% in I think it's a bit of a mentality thing I think when when you know that as you say you're not the players in reserve you maybe will take it a little bit easier for the fact that they, they don't want to risk getting injuries as well because if, if they know that they get injured then they know that, that that's another difficulty for the squad. They've not got not got the players who can fill in. On the flip side, it's a good win for Hull. Uh, yep. There's a lot of squad movement happening at Hull at the moment because we've had Talanoa who's retired. Yeah. Uh, Maludi, we knew had gone on loan, but has now gone on a permanent deal over to. It was, it, was a, it was a strange one, that wasn't it? The fact that he signed on loan and then he was confirmed as permanent within about what three days. It was yeah. crazy. It, it is, and uh, obviously they've just got rid of Danny Langtree. Mm. Um, who's now joined Oldham. Are they, if you're only just tuning in. Are they, <laughs> do you think that they're preparing to make a signing yeah, from somewhere? I, I think they do. Are they I making they space are, on the camp? Yeah, they're, they're definitely making space, aren't they? Or, and, that, and that's what it seems. What would uh, you sign to make them a better team? Well, well, you know, Can you think of anyone that's available at the minute? Uh, Jonathan Thurston retired at the end of the season. If you can bring bring him into retirement. I'd possibly. be happy. I'd be happy on Bondi Beach. The, no, no the, the thing is, Dave, is... I know we're ten, 10 rounds into the season, but it's still relatively early, isn't it? A lot of play, a lot of clubs um, are reluctant to let players go with Easter coming up mm-hmm. because people want a bigger squad as they can possibly get for Easter. Um, so who, who can they bring in? I, I think they're weak in the forwards um, hole, so I'd, I'd, I'd make a, a front row signing. But again, who, who's out there? One, who, w- yeah. one guy they won't be bringing in is Jordan Baldwin, who's joined uh, York, which is a particularly strong move for them, I feel. Yeah. Um, although he's really clocking up the clubs, isn't he? Yeah, he was at yeah, Halifax, he was at Lee last season. He, he had a, he he had a spell really. at New Zealand Warriors, didn't he? Yeah, he he's been at Featherstone, he's been at Leeds. Yeah, a journey, man. Some more clubs than Tiger Woods, just for poor lad. <laughs> yeah. So you just sort of wonder, you know, is there something in his makeup which means they can't yeah. sign someone? They're, they're always... There's always been that thought that he's a promising ass, a promising prospect. But how old is he now? Is he 24? 24, 25. So, you know, you, there comes a time when you cross that borderline, yeah, don't you? But, because, but, and you're no longer yeah. a promising youngster. You're actually, you should be a developing but, player. Yeah, but, but to, be, a developed to be fair to front rowers, um, I noticed in uh, Joe Philbin's interview that he did with Adrian Jackson, he said, I'm, I've, I've, I've only recently 
had my full man, man strength. I love the way you described that. I've got my full man strength. Um, but but it's, it's true though, isn't yes. it? Because yeah. cause, cause when you're a, f- a young front rower coming through, uh, you, 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 your body is just not physically there yet. I was it? having this conversation though because. But now he's mid 20s. Front rowers. He could be there. Front rowers seem to be maturing that little bit earlier these mm. days. You know, so in the past it used to be 28, 29. So yeah. your likes of your warms, they used just hit 29 a bit, considering his peak. Yeah. yeah. But. I get the feeling that there's some guys a bit younger than that now. Yeah, well, you still need to get that. You still need to give them young falls. I think, especially if you played in the front row, I think you, you have to wait until 24, 25 until they properly hit the stride. Because yeah. you look at Hull, they've got a lot of good, young, promising forwards at the minute. But you look at a lot of the ages, 20, 21, 22, and you, you know that they're not they're not quite there yet, which is where, as you said, they maybe need to look yeah. at bringing someone in. And yet they've got quite a few players at the other end of the spectrum, haven't they? So, yeah. you know aged forwards and I think you know like Minicello and yeah. um, Manu. Manu as well you know both sort of mid late 30s now aren't they? Washbrook West, uh, Westerman yeah. See, no, see, no, yeah, Westerman he's what, 20, 28 20, 20, yeah. 28, 29 but he's just been around for him yeah. <laughs> that's the thing with Westerman isn't it um, I want to move us on to Catalan's Dragons because this is a brilliant result that they've got against St. Helens I know it was on a do, bit of a sloppy can we just yeah. just touching back on all Ma- Michael England's just got in touch and said all these players leaving Hull is bad news for for Doncaster, one of the downsides of dual reg. Um, but yeah, the, Doncaster have profited from Hull's dual registration agreement over the last couple of years. A lot of that's plenty of youngs as well. A lot of that's been with younger players though that have gone out there. You know, I was thinking um, Cameron Scott. Yeah, yeah, Scott was a uh, you know the lad that I was thinking of actually. Ended up playing about ten games at Donny. Like, M- well, Malouni spent a lot of time at Doncaster. Last Malouni scored a lot of points at Donny. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair. Yeah. Well, then you uh, you've, you've got to think for a team like Doncaster, they can't be that reliant on dual reg. They've got, they've got to have a system in place where they've got the players, and then having someone on dual reg from Hull's maybe an added bonus. That that's that's how I think dual reg should work. I don't think they should be thinking, right? Well, we need these two, three, four players from Hull because that that's not a, a good model to have. I think they, they need. They need to use the, the players on dual reg as kind of a little bonus to inject into the team. I think everybody is ultimately trying to get to that stage, but for some it's easier than others. Yeah. Obviously, uh, over at, at, at Doncaster, I, I don't know the you know the ins and outs of the finances, but they'll be they'll be wicking themselves to the bone, won't they? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And Carl holds a tremendous job in keeping that club going. Um, you know, and, and sometimes you might have great facilities, but you've not got that infrastructure. And to be honest, Doncaster's never really been known for producing a lot of rugby league players, has it? You know, that have gone on to no. to great things. I can't think of somebody that was no. born in Doncaster who's been mm. an England international, for example. Mm. But if you don't, get in touch. In fact, they make a great question, that. I'm sure these guys have put do a quiz on it. Yeah. Yeah. I've just set them a home, the homework task. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, what do you think about Catalan's defeating St. Helens? That's a great result for the comp, that, isn't it? I, I, I was at the... Man, you, I'm, asking, I'm asking a Wigan at Yogurt. Uh, no, I, 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 was at, I was at the Wigan Catalan's game the week before. Uh, was it 42 0 final score for, yeah. for Wigan? And Wigan were good the week before, but they, they weren't hitting the straps. And but it was just Catalans who were absolutely diabolical. So going into into the the Saints game, I thought he was going to get absolutely battered. I thought it was it was going to be Saints by about at least thirty points, even though it, it was in Catalan because they were the Dragons were just abysmal in Wigan. Yeah, well, um, but I think the pitch was a leveler, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it certainly was, wasn't it? The the white kit of Catalan certainly <laughs> turned uh, black uh, on on Saturday. But I, I'm I'm not making excuses for Saints, but obviously I, I know Johnny Lomax and, and Theo Farge that the dynamic combination uh, that has played in the halves throughout the opening nine nine rounds in Super League obviously wasn't there and they, they had to play Danny Richardson and Jack Wellsby mm-hmm. in the halves who were a very, very young half-back pairing um, Wellsby didn't have the, the, the brightest game for Saints he got opened up a couple of times um, Danny Richardson as well he, he wasn't he, he's not playing like he was last season uh, maybe he needs a, a run again to, to hit that form that he reached for, for Saints last season Decent, decent result for Catalan. They they needed to bounce back because they they could they could get much worse than than what they played at like uh, at Wigan, uh, mm. and it was a fine performance from from Sam Tompkins, wasn't it? Yeah, and again, it comes down to Catalan's mentality. I think you look at you look at how how frustrating they are. Their their supporters must be absolutely 
tearing the hair out because you look at them on home soil and they're, they're looking like a really powerful side they've got a big forward pack they look they look good in the backs as well but then they, you take it on the road and then all of a sudden they crumble to pieces they, they fall apart as they did at Wigan and it's just it's just what can what can Steve McNamara do there he's got he's got the players he's got a good squad but it's how 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 does he help them overcome that mindset of, of picking up results on the road? Because it's it's all well and good having good home form, mm. but then if they, if they're picking up one two away wins a season, they're never gonna they're never gonna challenge at the top. I think he's trying to counter that, hasn't he, by signing all these English players? Mm. Yeah, but then but then again, it's still it's still got the same the same thing because Rams go from France to England to France. Mm. I think I know people say a bit about the jet lag or whatever. I don't know whether it's to that, but I think I think it's just been ingrained that much in some of the elder states of the Catalan team that. They they know that they've gone away from home so many times and they've lost and then they've lost again and lost again. Is it not just a mentality thing? You know, because everybody says with regards. I know we're going to talk championship in a little while, but you know, everybody says if you go to Batley, oh, it's the slope. And yeah. surely that's just a mentality thing. It's, well, a, it, it, it's a pitch. You don't matter where you play. Well, exactly. It's, it's, it's it's a, it must be it must be difficult uh, because obviously a lot of clubs as well nowadays tend to. Do they're back in in twenty four hours yeah. in in Catalan, But I know Saints went a couple of days before. I think they went really early last week. I think mm-hmm. it was like Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, so they, they, they wanted a holiday as well. They, they <laughs> weren't they weren't signed, but but that that can always, that might have an effect because yeah players might treat it as an holiday. Yeah. So so in the build up to the or game, even they, subconsciously treat it. Yeah, as yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it's away from your normal yeah, routine. Yeah, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not yeah, saying yeah. They're, they're gonna go and uh, just lie on some beds. All day for for three days, but I, I I don't think Johnny Lomax was doing anything to do with some beds uh-huh. during his time over there. Did he get a stomach bug? Did he? Yeah, I think that's oh, the reason right. why he was missing. Oh, um, but players might just not go into holiday mode, but they might just feel a bit more relaxed. And then when it comes to game day, they they're not quite in the mental zone for it. Mm. Um, it certainly seems to be an issue. But then it's. It's an issue for, for it's it's almost as if uh, Catalans snap out of holiday mode when they when they travel away from home because uh, they just seem disorganised. Yeah, hmm. it's it's quite a, it's, it's really. quite a worrying trend as well for Catalan the fact that every time they go on the road they, they fall apart and it's not like the personnel's different they've got the same personnel but it's just it's overcoming that yeah. mental it's overcoming that mental barrier because when it's happened for that long. It's like what what can they do? They can they can bring specialists in maybe to, to talk to them like I know football clubs have done in the past getting psych psychology coaches or whatnot. But I, I don't know whether whether that would work. We need so something like that. They've, they've got to try different things because at the minute it's just not working for them. Away from home. Especially with the money they've they've got as well, Catalans, yeah. and, and because if you if you look at that wage bill, that that's certainly got to be up there in Super League. Uh, what do you reckon? Is this the start of the rot at St Helens? Are they wobbling? No, uh, I think Lomax back in the team this week. I think him and him and Far, uh, him not Far, him and Richardson played a lot together last season, so they'll know each other's running style. That might that might actually be the first first time Richardson and Wellesby have played together in the halves, um, in the in the, in their whole careers because they're at different points in the under 19s I don't think they've played there for Lee have they, uh, together in the halves. I don't have Lomax. Um, no, oh, Wellsby. Richardson, Richardson and Wellsby. Yeah, Wellsby. Right. Wellsby. Wellsby's oh, never right, been okay. to play. Um, so, yeah, uh, so I think, I think it'll be much better this week. I don't know if they'll win. Uh, we'll get to our predictions in a little while, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I might throw a little curveball in. We've got a comment from Fred. Yeah. How are you doing, Fred? Um, yeah, he said that the RFL uh, have announced that they've got 324,000 viewers in total watching the Toronto games on Sky Sports so far this season. Uh, thoughts on it? It's not um, a lot, actually. It's, it's, about it's not a lot. That, isn't it? it's, it's not, not a lot. So eight games, isn't it? How many games are there? Is it eight, 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 eight games? Eight yeah, but then you've you, you got to bear in mind, though, as well, that at the time when they're playing on a Sunday at three o'clock, you've normally got a Premier League football on, which I think maybe that, that deters some neutral fans who, rather than tune into the rugby, they might tune into the football. Maybe yeah, people don't want to watch one sided rugby league. No, it is. It's been boring yeah, that, watching that, Toronto. That, that's, what I, that's what I was going to say. No disrespect to Rochdale, but you know what the result is before the ball's kicked. I mean, even yeah. against, you know, you, what, one thing that you could say about Toronto over the last couple of years, and this is perhaps symptomatic of a Paul Rowley coach side, they're exciting to watch. They have an exciting attacking structure. Under McDermott, it's, it's a. 
almost a passage of passages of play that gets the job done, but it doesn't excite. Well, it's, it's not a case of exciting that they're effective at what they do, but I think there is still that. There is... <laughs> this is sounding like that uh, that uh, sci-fi film. <laughs> we are an effective team. <laughs> I think, I think they, they, they were effective, but there is still that air of flamboyance in the team. You've got the likes of Josh McCrone, you've got Ryan Bryler's in the team. It's oh, like, I'm not having Josh McCrone as being a flair player. He's average. No, but, no uh, like yeah, average. Uh, he's, not, he's, not, he's not the best, but then you look, he's a flair player compared to a lot of players in the Championship against the quality he's coming up um, against. I've I, I got to disagree with you. No, yeah, but it's safe. But, but McCrone? Yeah, but then if, 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 if you... Chuck Bryley in there, Bryley's all flair. Yeah, but then... Chuck O'Brien in there, or O'Brien in there. No, but then look at, look at McCrone. If he's going to somewhere like a Swinton or a Rochdale, they're, they're, they're going to make him look better. I'm not saying he's, he's the best flair player, but... Compared to whoever's lined up for Rochester, say Dan Abram or someone like that, no disrespect to those players who were playing in the championship. I, I hope you're not calling Dan Abram. I, I, I know his dad, you know. Oh, get him on next week. <laughs> but I mean, it's the, the, they're, not as, they're not as good as McCrone is, yeah. and I think I think that that's what makes him look better. I think the fact that the fact that they go into these teams low down in the championship and they are they are still producing good rugby. I think I think we we can't stay away from that fact. They are still they're throwing the ball around. John Wilkin linking up the play. They're still playing quite well. I think Wilkins done well at Toronto all this season. Um, in regards to to how many view viewers they've got on Sky, they've got so it's prox forty forty thousand a game. Do you I think like, they've like mixed it up a bit? I like they're to, getting better view figures. Say if it wasn't just Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. Oh yeah, of course he will. Because so if they have that back back with the Dewsbury, for example, a derby. Uh, they'll get they'll get good viewers, but obviously it's Toronto who, who are paying for themselves to be shown on Sky. So we can't really fault Toronto, and we can't really say let's give it to other championship clubs when it's not Sky who are paying for it. It's Toronto who are paying for rugby league to be played on Sky. Yeah. Um, not everyone's a fan of Toronto. Some people are fans of it. Some people aren't. But I, I, I I'm not complaining because if I if I'm not doing anything on Sunday, I'll, I'll watch the rugby. Or so I, how many of those Saturday, how many of those thousand views are responsible for you then? Drew? Um, pro- yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, you, is, that, is this you flicking in between that and the football? Are yeah. you James flicking <laughs> that and the Premier League? Oh, I go downstairs, I put it on in the living room, and then run upstairs, put it on in my bedroom. <laughs> so it's so it's two two viewers, and then they I get, get, then get it on my phone as well. That's so yeah, that's three viewers. I'm the iPad as well. See, I told you you'd be you'd be going for loads of those. But yeah, I think. Forty thousand. It's it's a decent. Imagine if they were in Super League though, um, mm. and, and and obviously they were, they was playing like the likes of Leeds or uh, Wakefield, Saint Helens, whoever, whoever. Salford, Toronto, yeah. Salford. More people. What's the a average? A lot of more people are tuning in. And I think it's it's because. What's the average viewing on a Sky match anyway? Is it somewhere? I'm not sure. Is it I'm somewhere sure. sort of like eighty, ninety thousand? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Got, somewhere it's about about hundred thousand. But then, you, uh, okay. you, you yeah, know. but we got told some false figures, didn't we, at the start of the season? Is that including London? Was it? Yeah. In that, was it in that? Uh, Asterix not including London Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you you've got to remember though, without without the TV games that Toronto have, <laughs> there won't be any. Championship rugby on Sky. Aside from the summer bash, there won't be there won't be any broadcast. You'd have obviously you'd have your R League games, but aside from that, in the summer bash, there won't be half the exposure that the championship and a lot of the smaller teams are getting now. And I, and I, and I think players and clubs, um, other than Toronto, appreciate it as well. I yeah. think I think they look forward to to being on Sky, um, especially if they're not they've never played in Super League before, or or obviously they're, they're not a Super League standard player. Uh, Trying to be as respectful as I can, they they appreciate being on Sky because it's it's like the the chance in the line like kind of thing. Um, so I, I think they enjoy it, and I think if Toronto Toronto do go in Super League next season, if they gain promotion, uh, and if they don't slip at the final hurdle, then uh, I think the the viewing figures will be much better for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. It's it's an okay start. Um. Right, I want to move us on because there's one game in Super League we've not mentioned, and we've been skirting round it. You know, I, I've, I'm, I'm not going to have a go at you, Drew, but your Wigan team's hopeless, aren't they? When they get injuries into the half What Whatever happened from, from that first half, Dev? Uh, <laughs> they were brilliant in the first half, didn't they? <laughs> Oliver Gill, that absolutely ripped um, a Gordo, a new one. In that first half, and what? <laughs> Sorry, technical term. You, you didn't put that in your battery for what? <laughs> and what? And whatever, um, whatever. Daryl Pell said to Agoda at half time certainly worked because he came out in the second half, 
he got mullered in that first half, didn't he? A god or he, he got he, he got made to look like a boy um, uh, by Gilbert. Now well, come on, now come on. You, you've got to have it. Those wig and fall between. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll get, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get on to get on to that. So he got to Adam Murray in that first half. So whatever Pell, uh, Donald Pell said to him certainly worked because he came into that second half, he gave it to Gildart, and and it was pro- probably fitting for him to get that that match winning try in effect. Wiggins forwards in the second half. They've got a long, a lot of young forwards in at the minute, haven't they? And, and that just told in the end. I think. And, and those young forwards were the, the, the socks oh, off, oh, didn't don't, they? Don't get me wrong. The, the young forwards are great. They'll, they'll be they'll be unbelievable players in a couple of years' time. Morgan Smith is what a player he looks. Um, but it, 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 you could tell it was men against boys, couldn't you? In that in that second half, because oh. because the the sight, the sheer power of if, Castleford's if can park. Can you in here, James? Yeah, because yeah, I mean, that, that top. front row of, of Castleford's was absolutely immense, well, it, wasn't it? And it wasn't, it wasn't just the starting, the starting forwards for Castleford, it's the ones that they could bring off the bench. They had yeah. Matt Cook, yeah. Mitch Clark. The, the players the players they're bringing on were fantastic. The, they, that they, was the difference, wasn't it? The, yeah, the all making and, sort of like 100, 120, 140, well, 140 so, metres. Well, right? so, some, some of the stats were r- ridiculous how, how well they did, but I think once... Once Castleford got one try and then got another one and they started to tip the scoreboard over in that second half, I think you, you looked at it and you thought, right, they've got the wind wind in the sails now, they've got a bit of momentum. I think, yeah, I, I personally, I, I, you could visibly see that. You could see once they've got a couple of tries, you could, you could see there was a bit more, mm-hmm. bit more of a pace to the play the ball, a bit more of a pace to moving it out wide, move, uh, moving the attacking play. But I just say all, all good attacks start with the, the work of the forwards and I think you have to... Yeah. Give a hat tip to Liam Liam Watts. I think he had he had a fantastic game. He broke the line three times as well. He's in the form of his life. He's up, he's, he, has, he, yeah. he, he, he deserves that great Britain call, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he certainly does. Uh, I, ju- I love his attitude. I, d- I do. I, I, he's very abrasive, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. He's, he's what I think every player needs a, needs at least one player like Liam Watts in the team where he just brings that fire. He brings that fire to that fold pack. And I think his attitude and his performances actually lift the people around him. So Castleford actually get motivated by Liam Watts. When they see him doing the hard yards, getting his own side out, their own 10 metre zone, I think that spurs up um, other players. Well, it, it's kind of leading a bit by example as well, the fact that if, if the likes of Mitch Clark, who who hasn't really, he's been a bit on the fringes this year, he's not, he's not getting as many minutes as the likes of Watts, but then if he sees Watts actually tearing it up, then he's mm. sort of laying the platform yeah, yeah. for him. Yeah, certainly. I know that was your personal highlight of the week as well, wasn't it, James? It was that the performance of that pack. Yeah, that, that, that pack was definitely the highlight of the week. And I think, uh, in particular, just the, the ones who came off the bench, because I think without without that strong bench, then I don't, I don't think they would have got back into yeah. the game. I think the, I think Daryl Powell made the substitutions at the right time because he could see when some of his forwards were getting a little bit leggy and then he gave them a five, ten minute breather, introduced <laughs> them a little bit later on. I think that's what happened with Matt Cook. He was taken off for a 15-minute spell, brought on with 10, 15 minutes to go. So it, it, it was a very good performance by the forward pack, I think. I think it didn't didn't help with the fact that they got, was it three injuries yeah. in the game? I think. Yeah. So we, we saw who, who went off. We had uh, Jared, Jared Sammet and obviously Don Manfredi. He has yeah. to be the unluckiest player in rugby league, does Don Manfredi. You, you, you really have to feel for him, don't it's you? Outrageous. He's hard as bloody nails and he's got to come back from... Such a, a wretched injury. Once it's, again. It's, it's absolutely heartbreaking for him. Yeah, I remember speaking to him actually ahead of the um, Super League Grand Final last year. Before obviously all the all his two try scoring heroics in the final, and uh, he actually revealed that he, he he was thinking about being an HGB driver because he was out for he was out for two years, wasn't he? And he was thinking about just quitting the sport completely. Um, Getting an early retirement in and becoming an HGV driver, uh, and he said he put it on the back burner because he was just starting to recover from that injury. Uh, I think it was ten games that he's played as well since since he, he recovered and returned uh, in the back end of last season. Uh, oh, I, I really do feel for him. How much of a mental block would it have to be? This I've this I've got to say, you know, like he's my sort of winger as well. I mm. like aggressive wingers that just get stuck in and. You know, there's not, there's not. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's finesse there, but there's not the sort of finesse you get from someone that was like really classy, like a fighter yeah. or someone like that. He'll finish a try by brute strength mm. and determination. That, that's that's what you need quite often as well. I think the one thing that um is shown in the past is that he's got that real mental strength. He he he, he can bounce. Resilient, he is resilient. He can he can bounce back, and I think he's gonna have to show that once again. I think. 
he's, I'm sure he's got a good support network. The club, the club, will be right behind him every step of the way because he was just getting back to back to the form that he'd shown in the past, and then all of a sudden, new setback, another hurdle to overcome. But I, I think he'll be back stronger for sure. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully he will be back stronger because it'd be a shame to to maybe lose him from the sport. But he he did a tweet. I think it was. Um, on Wednesday night, of he uh, put something like, "I will be back bigger and stronger." Thanks for all the messages. Excellent. Um, so so he's, hopeful, he's already starting yeah, the fight, isn't he? Is it? Yeah. So he, he has hinted that he's he's planning on staying in the sport, which is a a good thing because the way he was playing as well, he could have been in even in with the show and making that Great Britain squad as well. Mm. Um, have we any other comments that have been joined? Uh, Don't try and stitch James up with any of <laughs> we've, we've not been getting too many uh, comments. Fred also says uh, the Sky viewing figures are down by 20% over the last two years. New beginnings. <laughs> Hashtag new beginnings. Uh, Steve Barton, any news on Goodwin going back to Oz? I heard this little rumour uh, the other the other week, but I, 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 don't, I think it's just a rumour. I don't think it's anything... Well, you, you, you always get that kind of rumour when you've got a player who's been out of the team for a little bit who's, who's, and when, when the players who were in in his place are yeah. playing just as well, if not if not better. Is he injured or is he just being Yeah, he's, 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 I think he's still injured at in the minute because he's been out for a few weeks and I think when when someone's out for a length of time and that, that always happens, you always get the rumours so they're not always homesick. Yeah. Or, but it's, it's, I, I might be wrong, but I think he's got his family over here as well. Yeah, yeah. It? No, I, I, I've spoken to him previously and... And obviously, when you speak to overseas signings and they say, well, it's it's a bit difficult for us and, and my family are struggling to settle in. But he said his family settled in straight away. His kids are loving it yeah. uh, over here. Uh, he loves the Warrington Club. Um, so there's no issue there. Uh, I think it's it's a case of not, just not rushing him back into the side. Yeah. Why would you rush him back into the side when you've got plenty of options to cover them positions while, while he's injured? There's, there's no doubt he's probably one of the best centres in the comp on his day. He was certainly up there in Super League last season. Uh, but yeah, I think I think all, all they are are, are, are rumours at the minute, um, Steve. Uh, Paul Harris has commented, Man Freddy will come back. Ben Curry had two major injuries mm. and seems to have picked back up where he left off, uh, although it's still only early days. It is early was days, that, We were actually yeah. almost speaking about this before. We was, we? yeah, yeah, off, yeah off he's, he's, had, um, he's had a couple of injuries prior to actually making it in the first team at Warrington as well, so you just sort of wonder about the state. When, when stuff like knees start to go, when you start picking up those injuries, you do start of wonder, like shoulders as well, mm. are you susceptible to it now? You know, I mean, mm. the big worry for Warrington must be regarding Widdert being out over in Oz. Yeah, well, that, that, that's the thing, when... When you know a player's got that, that is a little bit injury prone, mm-hmm. then it's it's always going to be a bit of a worry. And that it's it's actually quite interesting the fact that the fact that Widdup's out injured at the minute. It makes me think looking ahead to next season for Warrington, what's going to happen in the Haas? Because uh, I was speaking before to Drew before we before we started now saying that a player like Depp Patton, who's been excellent this season, I think some of his best season to date for Warrington, he's good enough to start for a Super League team. Uh, Regardless of the position, I think he's I think he's more than capable of stepping into a six or a seven. But then you you look at look at him whether whether at the end of the season he's he's thinking about maybe moving on, trying to get a first team gig elsewhere. Because I'm sure Steve Price knows his his starting halves would be yeah. Widdup and Austin. Yeah. But if you've if you've got Gareth Widdup injured, injury prone, then he's going to be looking at the situation and thinking what's going to happen with Pat because Pat won't want to sit on the bench. But then at the same time, if Patton goes, then that leaves leaves Steve Price and the Warrington hierarchy needing to sign someone else. Uh, do right. they? Do they not have an academy Warrington? They do, but... I think, not, oh, don't but go like on that, about they, academies again, That's not Drew. Warrington way, though, is it? As, as we've seen, they spend big on it. There's no academy kids coming through. I'm going to park it just for a minute. <laughs> I'm just going to park that for a minute. Keep your comments coming in, because we'd love to do them. Hang on, no, park it for a minute. Cause park, what I want park to do, is parking it. I'm parking it just for a moment, because what I want to do is get through League One pretty quickly, because uh, we saw five games last weekend. Uh, Doncaster defeating Coventry Burrs. London Scholars, what a result for them. Defeating Workington Town, 34 points to 32. Workington thought they had it so up at half-time. 26-10 up. Wow. What a second half, mm-hmm. led by Elias yeah. McCartney. Yeah, fair play to Jermaine Coleman and his, his scholars side. Um, 
I, I was watching uh, the League One roundup on the RFL website the other day, and, League, and Leon Price just said, we're fair play to London Scholars, the, the Blues away. Uh, Workington have travelled well away from home so far this mm. season, and uh, yeah, they, they obviously thought they already had the two points in the bag. They sat back in the second half, and the Scholars didn't go, give up, and, and they came back. There was another great second half as well by Newcastle, which is... You know, almost an herd of, of a Dennis Betts team being able to perform in the second half. Or do we give credit to Simon Finnegan, now the head coach, of course? Well, we don't, we don't yeah. know what. Yeah, we don't know what the the role of Betts is to be at, at Newcastle Thunder entirely. Obviously, Simon Finnegan's come in. I think it might be a little bit of an influence from Simon Finnegan. Obviously, yeah. Dennis Betts has been there, what about a month now? A yeah. month or so. Three or four um, weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, it seems like an exciting time. I mean, for, results are like picking up for them now, yeah. don't they? I noticed that they have climbed to third in the league. Um, West Wales Raiders, normal service, got only got 50 points put past them by Keithley. Um, <laughs> hat trick from Jack Miller, so it's nice to see him, considering he was in and out of the side of Doncaster got, last hey, year. They, they Getting they, regular. Yeah. West, performances. West Wales are certainly improving, aren't they, on last season? I don't they couldn't get much worse, though, could uh, they? They couldn't, but, but they've not been beaten by triple figures yet, Dave, this season. Mm. Surely it's a, it's a positive. A, it's a step in the right direction, I think, for them when you look at some of the results from last year. They're definitely, they're definitely improving, I think. They've still conceded 256 points in six games and only scored 60. Yeah. Yeah, they're still, they're still, they're still not where they want to be, but compared to last year, that could have been a lot worse. The Raiders are on the rise. Okay, uh, talk about another team on the rise. Thank you very much for that, link. <laughs> Whitehaven, what a result for them against Hunslet. We've, we've actually talked Hunslet up a little bit yeah. over recent weeks because they've impressed us with the, the form that they've shown in League One. Uh, but, you know, Whitehaven, with DNI really hitting the straps, apparently it was his best game, Papua New Guinean player. Oh. He's been there a couple of years now. Um, started off at loose forward, finished off at half-back. If he carries on those half-back performances, surely Wigan's calling, isn't it? <laughs> Might be there, but at uh, this what, rate. What a great result, that though. 16 to yeah. I mean, that, you know, you, you're going to... Hunslet have started tremendously well, yeah. haven't they? So, so Whitehaven would have had to put in a, a massive shift to, to beat them. And that's moved Whitehaven up to second spot, and Hunslet are only top by a point difference. Uh, into the Championship, a couple of outstanding results here as well. Batley defeating Witness, although I have to admit, I looked at that Witness team sheet, and I thought that they'd lose. As soon as I saw the team sheet, I thought, there's too many young players on that team. Mm. But then it's a case of needs must at the minute. I think the players who were missing, it wasn't through choice. It was, I think, Gellin had a problem with his groin, I think it was. He had a couple of other players who they were out. his wallet, did he? <laughs> you never know. But yeah, oh, controversial from you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> it can be controversial occasionally. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think, I think, I th I think witness, witness did a good job, I think. Uh, I think... They, they maybe took the wrong options with penalties at times. I think to what I think it was towards the end they had a they had a penalty that Jack Owens went for goal from thirty, thirty five yards out from, well, that from level the they wanted, I think. Yeah, but I think when when you're at that stage of the game and you've got a bit of momentum behind you and thirty thirty yards out from the touchline is never an easy kick. You you'd rather I'm sure the coach will be tearing his air out, you'd rather kick for the corner, build a little bit of pressure. Because if they could have scored a try, which was could have been could have been quite likely then they would have they would have took the lead and then it was all on all on Batley. Conversely, great result for Batley. I mean they've been really inconsistent. I think that was only the second victory out of nine games. Yeah, they have struggled so far this season. Um so hopefully things are picking up for him. Uh, Louis Jeffrey apparently was outstanding in that game. Mm. I know you saw him late last season yeah. when he, he just joined Batley at yeah. Lee, turning a star turn the He's a, he's a cracking player, isn't it? To watch, he's got he's, he has got that French flow. <laughs> yeah, he's, it's a journalist's dream, isn't it? To to write that he has that French flow, but he does. He's a he's a, he's a classy halfback to watch. Talking um, about classy as well, James Woodburn Hall had a, a day to remember. Jamaica international, up the reggae warriors. Excellent. <laughs> Shut me up then for a second. You stop me dead in me tracks. But yeah, James Woodburn Hall. Played half back this past weekend for Halifax. Oh, he's not a full back, isn't he? He's been around. He, yeah. he's, he seems to be performing almost a Jake Mamo role for Halifax. He's versatile yeah. Yeah. this year. Yeah, he's as versatile as an egg, as they say. <laughs> um, Steve Tyra back on form two try scoring and goal kicking, two tries and six goals. Bradford were indebted to two tries from Dalton Grant and if. Wales International. Yeah, but I was going to say if Don Manfredi can take some solace from sort of coming back. 
he's only got to look at the injury record Dalton Grant's had as well through his career because he's had to, to come back. So it's good to see him getting out there regular and proving a, a match winner for the Bradford Bulls. Uh, York defeated Swinton, 30 points to 20. By all accounts, Swinton were very lively. What are you grinning for? <laughs> <laughs> Just smiling, yeah. Just a happy guy. He loves his rugby league. Can, I I thought, can, I, can no one be happy? Oh, it's rugby league, we've got to be negative. <laughs> don't want you start as well. Listen, it's realistic, it's not negative. Go on, Dave. Go on. Um, York were interested to two try Matty Marsh. Matty Marsh? Yes, who played for Kingston Rovers. Uh, Lee Centurions won a points fest against Barrow. 46 18 it was with about seven minutes remaining. Yeah, but listen, Barrow scored two late tries. <laughs> from, from listening to the final into podcast on the rugby league.com. Uh, John Duffy wasn't happy was he after the game he weren't a happy bunny no and um, I've I've got to be honest there was some terrible defending in the last sort of 10-15 minutes from Lee but um, they they kind of did enough and kind of just did enough and obviously I'll have to get a lot better than that but you know credit to credit to Barrow Um, they've got a couple of Papua New Guinea players so I don't know where it is with Papua New Guinea players going up to Cumbria Mm, Um, something in the water but uh, Willie Minoga played in second row. The frame oh, is, that, is, that, is that Carly's brother? He should be so lucky. <laughs> and uh, Wartovo Puara. Or, or is it Danny's husband? <laughs> no, he used to play for, he used to play for Swinton. <laughs> um, Toulouse defeated Featherstone. Just the one try <laughs> scored in that one. I'm not even giving you the solace of that. Um, he- Tyler Heppy, the lone try scorer. I'm surprised he's not been picked up by someone yeah, higher up the rugby league. Yeah, he's yeah, a decent player, isn't it? Mm. Uh, I've seen him a few times, and uh, yeah, he's just a strong ball carrier, isn't he? Well, they've got they've got a lot of good a lot of good players at Toulouse that maybe yeah. could play at high level. You've got Jonathan Ford, Mark Carella, Cook Island International, Jonathan Ford. Mm. Oh, we've seen him in twenty twenty. Mark Carella, France International. Even though he's Australian, he's from Sydney. New beginnings spreading across the world. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, and then and then Toronto board everybody to beat Sheffield eventually, 40 points to 10. A yeah. couple of tries there for Matty Russell, who in particular, again, has hardly had to run any metres at all to score any of these tries, has he? Because Latelli tends to just put him on a plate for him. And yeah. Or, or Brian. The Samoa International to the Scotland. <laughs> Are you just trying to fit as many punches <laughs> as you can now? No, I'm onto you, okay. I'm onto you, okay. Fred also says Jamie Act tonight for the rest of the season as well. Yeah, yeah best of our, our best wishes go to, to Jamie. I think he's having spinal surgery. Yeah. Which is, it's a or, or, wait, I, th- I think I read something on Swinton's website. It was spinal surgery. <laughs> <laughs> have, they, have they been looking at your spelling mistakes? <laughs> I think they have. I think they have. Um, so I noticed you, you put yes. barrel overheated. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Bar- barrow heated? Barrow heated, yeah. I don't know where that come from. It was something else that should have been on the, on the thing. Well, you should have picked me up on it, Dave. Well, you'd seen as you were You're picking, picking up Swinton. Seen as you were picking up Swinton, I thought I'd pick you up. You know, you can't. No, no, but you, you know, you know, the, proof, the proof's got to be in the pudding, Dave. You know what I mean? You can, you, you've got to remember the piece, unless it never happened. you got to remember the piece. <laughs> what are we, are, are we talking uh, uh, mushy piece again? Bachelors. Have we, have we got any... We've no competition. No, we fell out with Bachelor. No, 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 no,
Yeah, and no, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. Um, Friday night sees Leeds Rhinos take on Workington. Fury against Hurrell. I can't see anything else but a Leeds Rhinos win by, by a, a big scoreline. Right, Salford got, Devils do you, could. Do you even think Hurrell play that game? Do you think he might give him a rest ahead of, ahead of Easter? Correct, or up. Considering he's playing that well, they can't afford to have him in a Challenge Cup game and him get injured. That's a. I might block. need him to get through that one though. Well, yeah. well, you, you, you get a feeling it's always that game. The longer that Workington can hang in there, the uh, the more restless the crowd will get. Obviously, Brad Singleton will play against his brother Perry Singleton. Yeah, Perry's well. a half decent player as well. I know he took the he took the amateur route into the game, got a trade behind him, so you know he uh, decided to set himself up before making yeah. his way in rugby league. But he's a decent player. Sure, could possibly be playing at a yeah. slightly higher level than what he's at at the moment. Um, Salford against Rochdale. Salford, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a, a, like a fifty-two six score or something like that. Very specific. Very specific. Saturday sees Witness Vikings at home to York City Knights. That could be a cracking jack of a tie. Jordan Bowington could make his debut as well mm. for York. If he's on loan though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it said in the press release he's in contention to play. Really? Yeah. So obviously Wakefield just don't fancy him at all, mate. Do well, they? yeah. Yeah, it seems that way. Yeah, I think I think Witness will have a put a good team out for that. You you get the feeling that for it all for a fi- financial point of view as well, you've got to remember that they, they need to get through these rounds because it the, the further they can get, the more money they get, and it sounds like this at Witness they need all the money they can get. And Anthony, <laughs> Anthony, Ge- Anthony, Anthony Gelly says um, Witness are making Wembley twice as well this year. What is it? What, are they actually about. building it? They build, they got, don't, don't tell me they've got one of those kits that you buy over like 74 weeks and you get like a pack, you know, so. How, how will that work if they, re, if, they, if they do by some miracle reach two finals back to back? I don't know, but it's not going to happen, is it? Mm. It's not going to happen. It's it's some witness fans will disagree with you. Well, well you, you know something. They might reach the 1895 Cup final, but they're not reaching Challenge Cup final, are they? I'm ready for the hatred. I'm ready for the hatred because that... Up the Neats, up the Neats will do it. I think they'll do a job though. I think James Ford will have them fired up. Um, I, I was, I was I'll wondering, I was wondering as well whether this was Ford's first return to Witness since he was there as a player mm. so several years ago. I think it might yeah, be. Possibly, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I think it is. I think it might be. So he's got some unfinished business with Witness. But yes, well then you, you look at York and you think in the grand scheme of things where they are in the league at the minute. I think they've got it. They've got to prioritise that. Hang on. We're talking about Witness, who, by the way, are on nil point. Yeah, but we're at the bottom of the table, and you're saying that York should prioritise. Yeah, I do because I think Witness, in terms of finances, the Challenge Cup's more beneficial for them. Whereas for York, if they want to finish in the top five, they can't afford to be going all out of the Challenge Cup. Saying that in terms of finances for Witness, they should sell Anthony Gallen in terms of finances, but they're not done. Yeah, they could just sell his videos, can't they? Start making DVDs of him. He's like little Spielberg, isn't he? It's amazing with some of these videos that he comes up with on social media. I like it. I like it. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna use him as a bit of a a, a, a bit of a, a boost for me own. I'm not sure. Carlin International. <laughs> Another name drop. Country drop. That's obsessed. Like, that's not obsessed. <laughs> Talking about obsessed. Bradford Bulls against Featherstone. You can't get two more committed sets of fans than them two, can you? No. What where do your loyalties lie with that one? I'll go with Bradford. Home advantage, uh, Hudson. Mm. Bradford just defeated Featherstone, by the way, when they came up against each other mm. in the league. Yeah. I noticed they put a ticket deal on, so all this nonsense about charging 29 quid, was it, or something, to get in at Hudson. Yeah. It's actually charged a bit less this time. It's a cup. Yeah, 28 quid instead. Yeah. <laughs> 28, but 50p extra if you can't get it. Doncaster <laughs> against Batley. Do you fancy Doncaster's caught with a shock? I think I think Batley after after that performance game with, against Witness I think they'll have the wind in the sails and I think I think we'll see the Bulldogs progressing. Two wins in succession now for Batley. Yeah, they're, doing, they're yeah. doing very well. They've got when you when you get that momentum. I think I, th- I don't think Doncaster will be able to stop them. I think I think it'll be a close game, one of the closer games of the round. But I do think they've just got too much. Yeah, I'll go with Batley as well. And I'm really looking forward to this one on Sunday. I will be there over Fatto Heath. The Crusader Park, Close Street. Crusader Park. Close Street. Yeah. It's Crusader Park. <laughs> Close Street. You've got, to go, you've got to go down Close Street to get to Crusader Park. He likes, it, he likes the old names, Dave. You're putting all the addresses. Like, like Shove a, post, a postcode in as well. He, like, he likes the, the traditional names. Uh, I've, I've already been the told. The Weldon Roads. 
Weldon Road. And the post office road. No, the Mepa Mender Hose Jungle. None of that. None of that. None of that LD, LD Nutrition Stadium is post office road. Bellevue, not the mobile rocket stadium. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing yeah. this game against uh, Thatto against Jewsby Rams. I think this will be quite close. I think this will be the shock of the round. I, I, oh, I've, you're tipping that to again. I'm tipping that again. I've, I've tipped them twice and they got through, so I'll keep keep it going. Maybe maybe we're the They should be chance. entering the 1895 Cup on this form. Yeah, winning, they, they? Every time they tip that, they seem to win, don't they? They're, they're doing well, and I think yeah, out of all the sides they could have played, I think they've got a fairly favourable draw. And they've got some great players that have played at that level as well, to yeah. be honest, and, and some other lads like Andy Lee, who was on the, the Fiji tour with Bale, who was phenomenal on that tour who I tell you what if I was going to war I'd have my long side I hope we don't go to war do you? <laughs> um, who knows what will happen Brexit's been put off till, <laughs> till well, October Brexit means Brexit going off Brexit uh, uh, did, I did, think Jewsbury will win yeah. I'm sorry that's what you fans and St. Thomas you swine fans. But, you uh, swine you turn court it's not the leader it's like turn court yeah I think I think uh, I think Jewsbury will just uh, will just be too fit for them. Yeah. I think I, I just think the fitness will pay pay off in the end for the Rams. Uh, I think it'll be quite close, but yeah, I think Lee Greenwood will, will get the two points and take it back uh, to Yorkshire. I parked a couple of comments before that you was eager to, to read through. Oh, so you let's, did, you did, you did. You let's did. just return to um, those. Ian Gallagher says, with serious ACL injuries on the increase, Yep. Uh, there is a growing support for the theory that it is down to modern boots that are being worn. We had really? this comment last week, didn't we? we uh, did. The FA have commissioned a survey into this in football. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, so there's been an increase right across the board as they're in football. Yeah. I, I mean, like I know in other sports, Robinho, for example, is doing a lot of work around the tackle techniques and stuff at the minute, aren't they? They're, they're also bringing something in where kids could only play half a game or something for the next season, which I don't fully get. No, um, I, don't, I don't. I disagree with that, and I disagree I, with with like in football when they say you shouldn't have the ball. I honestly, yeah. I honestly think though that yeah. a lot of our issues, uh, when it firms up and it gets a bit drier. But also the distance between you know, I've said this before, I think that we should return to the old five metre now it's me going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Return to the old five metre rule, contested scrums, Hooker's doing a proper job, bent noses everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um Mike wants James again. Um <laughs> Your mate Mike. Friend. Um, I think that I think that's about it for the comments. It was just that just that one comment. Uh, Paul Harrison says um, Ben Curry is signing an extension due to be announced uh, imminently. I think it was on about Curry because he put it just under the Curry comment um, when we were talking about Curry and Manfredi. Or it's not that you know Curry's on order in Warrington, is it? Because talking of which, you know, it is lunchtime. And I can see James is famished. I know that they have some food in order. We do. Uh, so we're just about out of time. Thank oh, you well, very well, much for joining us. Are we going to give away? Should we do oh, a giveaway? No, we're not going to do the giveaway now. Hang on, hang on. Come on. Don't oh. just talk from... This, 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 no. Wait, what's it meant to be a giveaway? <laughs> do we no, know no, of a no, giveaway? No, no, no. It's going to give away that. We've got, we've got a few to give away. Hang on. Here, mod- model. Model it. Work it, really work it. Work them golden Steven. balls, James. We're going to launch. Pay for it. We will launch the competition on Monday. So, so it'll run over Easter and we'll pick one or two winners. Not, not 100% confirmed on how many we're going to give away, but it'll be all announced on Monday. So keep looking out for the site. Plenty to come from Love Rugby League. Our oh, thanks go to our sponsor, Betfred, as well, for their continued support. You've been watching Love Rugby League Weekly. We've been the Motley crew. We're going to throw our balls away now. We are. You've always got to lower the tone, haven't you, Drew? Can't help ourselves. <laughs>